Hello and welcome to another monster class guide. My name's Nate, and today we're going to look at four more monster classes from the Sky of Five. Right, so first of all we're going to look at the Sea Angel. Uh, the Sea Angels are squishy little supporting casters. The best used as a way of helping out your other units from behind the front lines. They can cast Ice Magic up to the Giga level, and they have a number of e abilities used to power up the rest of the party. As usual, I'll be putting up some example e abilities of what you can use for each class on the screen. Sea Angels have rather poor defensive stats, their speed and HP being very low, and their defense not being much better. They have slightly better intelligence and a high resistance, so you're going to keep them out of harm's way and cast spells and healing at a distance. They don't actually learn healing spells naturally, but it's something to consider since you'll probably be used as a support unit anyway, and her resistance is good enough to make her a decent healer. Her unique e ability, Lovely Song, increases all stats of your units by 3%. A straight up stat boost, being active as long as the Sea Angel is on the field, is a very useful buff to have. Having several Sea Angels or other units borrowing their unique e ability, can be an easy way to boost your strength. When magic changing, they become a staff, and they have a unique magic change with the Flora Beast, which we'll cover later. The Sea Angel's first skill is Bubble Cutter. It's an ice spell which can hit one enemy in a range around the user. This is just your standard first skill. Then we have Water Guillotine, a stronger ice skill with a longer range, but it only has the ability to be cast on one target in a straight line from the angel. Buckle Cones is a little bit more interesting. Uh, while it has a shorter range, this skill has the same power as Water Guillotine and absorbs some of the HP of the target. This one does not have an element, however. Finally, for the unique skills, we have Nilfheim, another 3x3 ranged area of effect skill. A useful skill for leveling and damaging crowds. As for magic chain skills, we have Cold Rain first. This is an ice spell uh, that hits three enemies in a line. This is mostly useless for any spellcaster who already knows ice spells, as high rank ice spells dwarf the power of this fairly easily. Ice Dancer does have more going for it. It's a 3x3 skill with an ice element. Not only is this useful for power leveling, but it also has the added bonus of having a chance to inflict the charm ailment. It's also pretty powerful compared to a lot of the Sea Angel's other skills. Use your Sea Angel from the back row and cast when you can, but one of her greatest assets is just being on the field in the first place as a buff. She's welcome in any party as a support. The Flora Beasts. So Flora Beasts were introduced in Disgaea 2 as a supporting monster. While Sea Angels lean a little more towards offensive magic, Flora Beasts are kind of odd. They have a decent attack and intelligence, and they have a good res stat. They're one of those classes that are very spread out in their abilities, so they become a jack of all trades, and sadly a master of none. Their unique ability is Sweet Aroma which causes all allies within two panels to recover 20% of their health at the end of the turn. It makes sense then that the Flora Beast wants to be out in the thick of the battle, but a less than stellar HP and defense make this something I would be cautious about. They can do some damage though. While they do lean to using physical skills, you can make them spellcasters if you want, as their intelligence is good enough. They just don't learn any spells naturally. All of the Flora Beast's e abilities are about buffing their nearby allies, so you could consider them a sort of support DPS class. The Flora Beast's basic skill is Spiral Needle. It's a weak skill that hits the four spaces next to the Flora Beast. Not something that you'll want to use once you get something better. Flower Dance is a healing skill that can hit up to five targets in a cross formation. While this is a weak healing skill, it's available quite early for the Floras, and can be useful in combination with their e-ability, which is already healing allies. Non-Stick Thorn has a good range and hits in an X pattern. It's both stronger and easier to use than Spiral Needle, so it basically makes that skill obsolete. Petal Concerto is the Flora Beast's ultimate skill. 
It's still not terribly strong, but it can hit six spaces in a row with a decent wind element attack. Flora Beasts become a gun when they magic change. And our first magic change skill is Death Sprout. This is a long range single target skill, a typical gun skill for dealing damage. And Electric Garden is your usual magic change 3x3 skill. It's just as useful as the others and this particular one has the fire element attached to it. There's also another magic change skill when a Flora Beast dual magic changes with a Sea Angel. This skill is Ice Death Sprout. It's a buffed version of Death Sprout with an Ice element. While they do hold an unusual position as a squishy, healing melee support class, the Flora Beast may have a spot on some teams that want to prioritize their buffing and healing abilities. And next we have the Phalen, which is also commonly known as the Necromata or Catgirl class. This class has been around since the first Disgaea game, and has remained largely the same in terms of usage. These are close range physical attackers with potential to do higher damage with their counter happy gameplay. They have good attack, good speed and HP, and are suited for close range combat. While they don't have amazing defense, their speed can make up for it by dodging a lot of attacks, and their decent HP can take a hit or two if it comes to that. And they do want to be putting themselves in places where they can get hit anyway, as many of their abilities improve the effects of their counterattacks. Their unique ability, Final Blow, causes her to attack again if the enemy is left at 10% or less health by one of her attacks. I'm not sure if this works with a counterattack, so if you can confirm this, please leave a comment below. Later on in the game, this ability becomes less useful. But early on, it's not bad as an offensive tool. Kitty Rampage is the first of the Necromancer's skills. It does okay damage for a starting skill, but it only hits one space in front of the unit. We then have Kitty Brain Blast, which does slightly less damage, but hits all adjacent spaces. This also knocks the enemies backwards. Cat Strike hits in a rather odd T-shaped pattern in front of the Neko. The damage is okay and it's a welcome attack as not all of her skills have a good range or hit many targets. Rolling Cat Rush is an excellent attack. It only hits one target within three spaces of the Phalen, but it does very good damage and has a chance to paralyze. So these Cat Girls can magic change into axes. And the first of her magic change attacks is Meow Meow Beating. This is a single target attack which does decent damage. Early on in the game this isn't too bad. Her stronger magic change skill is Lovely Poor Fist. This follows the tradition of being a 3x3 damaging skill. It's decently powerful but there's not much else to say about it. Finally the Felin can dual magic change of a succubus in order to use Heart Pounder. And this is similar to Meow Meow Beating, but it can affect two targets instead of one, and is slightly stronger, making it a much better move. Building a speedy felon with high counter potential is a good alternative to the humanoid brawler, letting you dish out high bursts of damage. Succubus. Of the monster classes, the Succubus is a capable magic user, using both offensive and healing spells. Where the felon is a front row physical damage dealer, the Succubus is somewhat of an oddity as being a front row spellcasting unit, who has high enough survivability to not be a liability to the team there. Succubi can learn fire magic naturally up to the Giga level, and have the unique ability Sexy Aura. This causes male units stood next to her to have their stats cut by 20%, and that's a huge decrease in stats. But the fact that it only works on males does make it a bit of a weaker ability. It also encourages the Succubus to get close to their enemies, which normally they wouldn't have to do due to their long range casting. You probably want to weave her in and out of the fight, getting close to men when she can. Her first unique skill is Hip Attack. This is very useful for a basic attack as it inflicts okay damage, can inflict charm and also absorbs HP. Not many other basic unique skills are that useful. Then we have Evil Healing which halves the Succubus' SP and recovers the SP of everyone in the 8 spaces around it. This is useful early on in the game when SP can sometimes be scarce, as a way of getting your better units back into the fight. But other than that, 
items can probably do a better job, especially if you have a maid class. Then we have Thunderbolt, which is a fairly unimpressive wind attack. And then we have Dazzling Stage. It has a good range, it does okay damage, and it inflicts the Charm ailment too. So this is probably her best unique skill for taking out groups of enemies. When she magic changes, the Succubus becomes a gun. And Heartbreaker is the first of her magic chain skills. It doesn't do a lot of damage in itself, but it does cause the weaken ailment for a slight bonus. And her other skill is Twin Attribute. A large multi-hitting attack that does pretty good damage, and has the star element. Overall the Succubus isn't a bad class, she's used as an aggressive caster, or a sort of anti-male unit on the front lines. It's an interesting take on a monster mage. And that's all for today. Expect some more Disgaea themed videos coming soon, I will be completing this series of monster classes. If you'd like to help out with the channel, consider checking out the Patreon page, but otherwise subscribe, join the Discord server in the description, and I'll catch you next time. See ya!